so encouraging to, I think, people like me who don't do a lot of acting. It's, you can get better. Yeah. Like, there's literally a foolproof plan. Yep. You were asking me some questions as I was building my character for Murder on the Orient Express about acting. And so I told you that I would bring in yes. this oh, book so on Stella Adler and just kind of talk a little bit about her. You've probably heard of the Stanislavski method of acting. Yes, maybe. No. Okay. She studied for him. It's probably the most well-known method of acting. Okay. There's also a miser technique. Okay. And then there's also um, a Strasbourg method as okay. well as several other different ones. But those are kind of the main ones that you hear about. So to back up slightly for people like me who really don't know a lot about Ooh. acting. Yes. Um, similar to science, they name these methods after the person who invented them. Yes. Um, she actually studied at the same time that Strasbourg did. And okay. then they kind of became competitors, actually, because they both took the method and changed it a little bit, which is really interesting. One of the things that I really like that she says, though, is that her method by itself is not enough, that you mm. really should study the other methods as well and mm. figure out for you what resonates with you mm. so that it makes you the best actress that you can. And I kind of like that, that it makes it so that it's not that competitive, yeah. Yeah. right? So, but... Um, her technique is founded on an actor's ability to imagine a character's world, okay? Mm. Um, she believed that any over-reliance on personal or emotional memories limited your range. Her technique encourages actors to expand their understanding of the world in order to create these performances. She taught her actors to deliberately observe all the textures, the sounds of everyday life, enabling them to conjure detailed and realistic mental images on stage. When those mental images are nuanced, the actor can authentically express the imagery to the audience and, de and develop a truthful performance. Interesting. So... So one of the things that she talks about then is experiencing things. And I think that we had talked about a little bit before this, that whenever I'm in a play, I go back to some of the things that she talked about, which was, okay, the scene starts, it's not necessarily page one, right. it's when I enter the room. Yes. For me, it's my scene. It's a little like method acting mm -hmm. because you're becoming the character but you're not really. It's right. more the awareness of everything around you yeah. that makes you experience and feel it a little bit different. Which sounds more healthy because I've heard yes. a lot about method acting how, yes, it made the man who played Lincoln incredible, but it messed him up. Right. 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 Um, and, and I think we talk about that a little bit with the guy who played the Joker, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. He's it, it was fantastic yes. of yes. what he was able to produce, but at what detriment to the actor right. or right. actress. Right. So it sounds like you're taking the cool side and the positive side of method acting yeah. without becoming it yourself. In case anybody wants to know, one of the most famous people that ever studied under her was Marlon Brando. I did not know that. And he's her probably most famous student, which I think is really interesting. Wow. So one of the things that I'd like to do is read something that she says in the very first step of her book, mm. which I think lays such a foundation for the difference between her technique. She says that one of the things that she talks about always and that she will keep repeating to you is that acting is not about you. Ooh. which I think most of us think that acting 100% is about yeah. us and how yeah. we're going to change. You have to understand that while you're in the room, you leave the outside world outside. You need every part of yourself here. You don't need your father. You don't need your mother. You don't mm. need your husband. You don't need your child. You don't need to hear what happens on the news. You need 100% honorable selfishness towards you. But it's not about you. Isn't that fascinating to that hear her put so it that way? Interesting. Um, so it goes on to talk about all these different parts and that you have to learn how you do what you do by acting. You have to learn it in a classroom. And none of that is really true. You just have to figure out what it is around you that makes your character do what it is that they're supposed to do. Wow. So... I love it. It's pretty deep. How do you think life would change if we took this concept and brought it into the real world? <gasps> so the idea of intentions, 
Like even thinking through, like when I go to a party, not even thinking about it, my intentions are to be liked, to be mm. noticed, to mm. make people laugh a lot of times. Yeah. What if I, before I went to that party, decided my intentions were to love people? How would mm. that change the scene of life? Yeah. Isn't that an interesting thought I, to think? I think there's a beautiful thought to, to think. And I think that we waste a lot of opportunities as Christians not being more aware of yeah. our scenes in yeah. life, right? And yeah. the moments that we have to mean something to each other. Because what happens is we might be aware of those intentions, mm -hmm. but they're not really the right ones, right? Because yeah. we, we go in and we're like, oh, I feel uncomfortable about this and that and the other. And pretty soon the focus, remember I started by saying it's not about us, yeah. but we make it about us. Yeah. If you walk into a room at a party and you know that your purpose, your intention today is to make everybody feel better about themselves, then they are going to respond to you differently too, yeah. because they can see that you have, you're not just making small talk, talk, right. you have an intention. Yeah. And people do, yeah. they do notice yeah. that and they notice joy and they'll notice yeah. that you're caring about people. Yeah. That's beautiful. I just want to summarize to say that I believe that the reason that I like her technique is that one of the benefits is that it helps us develop our ability to be imaginative and dis disciplined. Have you ever been in a play either with me or somebody else where they're describing all these things to you, but we don't have it to be able to imagine it yet. And so we're constantly like, Oh wait, I don't understand. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. And we, we can't get into the scene because we can't see it. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the reasons that that's easier for me to do yeah. because it's that way for she me from the beginning. Yeah. I'm always imagining yeah. what the world looks like. And it might not look the same way you imagine it, but right. it's okay. Right. It's my world. It's my performance. They also say that one of the benefits is that we, we tend to be more well-equipped to tackle characters that are different from ourselves mm. because we're always, again, imagining. It's so encouraging to, I think, people like me who don't do a lot of acting. It's, you can get better. Yeah. Like, there's literally a foolproof plan. Yep. But you have to put in the work to do it. Right. And that makes the extraordinary actors yep. separate from just actors. I need to teach a class. <gasps> I totally agree yeah. on acting. If I you're interested to. in an acting class at Overshadowed, leave a comment down below. This method. Tell us what things you would like us to talk about. Because we would like to give you what it is that you need to hear. Yeah. So until next time, this is just me. And me. Talking to you from, from the, the wings. wings.